What's up, guys? Carolina Jackpot coming at you. It's Sunday afternoon, July 26th, 2020. And uh, we're talking college football today. Uh, you know, I've been on vacation all week and I've uh, been doing some scratch videos, this, that, and the other. Uh, however, I figured that it was the right place and time and um, saw some content this afternoon. Well, not this afternoon, actually, yesterday morning and uh, Friday night, actually, that ruffled my jimmies just a little bit. And I figured I'd get into this somewhat and um, address it and uh, address, um, uh, you know, more football, more football head coaching situations and more stuff at the University of South Carolina. I've yet to do my 2020 uh, official official season preview for the Gamecocks. By the way, this video is brought to you by Miller Light and High Expectations that usually get shit on bottoms up um i haven't brought the 2020 uh regular season uh preview video yet because obviously i don't even know what the regular season schedule is going to be uh with the virus going on i, I just don't know what's going to happen uh, i wanted to do a bunch of videos on a bunch of different teams this year but i mean it just seemed like a stupid moot point because, I mean, this is getting canceled. We've decided to do this. We're going to do this. This conference is going to do this. This is not going to do that. This conference is at Notre Dame, which I think is a bitch move. And, uh, we, you know, it's just all over the damn place, man. It's like a, a fart in a whirlwind. So, till we get a concrete schedule on paper that is published by ESPN and some reputable people that know what the fuck they're talking about. I mean, I'm not going to give you a regular season game by game prediction from a Gamecocks because I don't know what they are. And it seems stupid to give a prediction on games that are not even going to happen. Okay, but I do want to talk about this. And my this is what I want to talk about today is my case for firing Will Muschamp as head football coach at the University of South Carolina. Now, if you want to rewind real quick to 2019, um, I was not happy with the way the season went down. Uh, you all know that. You know, you got some great videos from me last year. And uh, a lot of people, Uncle Lou in particular, want to give me shit for taking my videos down uh, after I do them. Man, I get some live videos out here where I get, man, I get so crunked up and so, so bearded up after the game. that I just, I'm just embarrassed for him to be out there. So, I delete it. But, you know what? I'm looking at some of these other videos, some of these other people put out there. I'm like, you know, what do I have to be afraid or ashamed of? So, this is my pledge to you that nothing from here on out will be deleted by Carolina Jackpot. Win, lose, or draw. Okay? Win, lose, or draw. I'm not deleting any live videos. I'm deleting nothing. Now, I will say this. I'm a little bit aggravated with the live video thing with YouTube. So I live stream stuff, and uh, when my buddies, Rob and Comrade Show, are live streaming stuff, it's like a day later before it appears to where people can actually watch it in real time. And uh, I, I really don't get that, but um, uh, that's a question for me to ask the YouTube folks. Uh, not to ask y'all, it really doesn't have anything to do with you. But um, that's just one uh, bitch and gripe that I have. Because I'd do a lot more live videos with you all if I knew that they were going to get posted automatically where people could continue viewing them, viewing them, viewing them, instead of them getting, like, put up here and hung up in outer space for a while to spin around before they finally get back down here to get posted when it's like, you know, I'm saying it's like 24 hours, my man. I mean, like, a whole bunch more shit's happened by that time. Ain't nobody interested in what the hell you damn live recorded 21 hours ago. Get on out of here with that. You know, that's what makes me mad about it. So, that's my bitch with YouTube right now. And what I'm trying to figure it out. Rob said, over the Rob and Comrade show, Rob said he was going to email them, but uh, I don't know. Rob hasn't got any answers so far. But I want to talk about Will Muschamp and um, some statistics from his first four years at South Carolina. I also want to talk about some stuff that popped up this weekend on uh, Instagram, uh, on Twitter, and over on uh, SportsIllustrated.com, the Gamecocks page, uh, especially by a few former Gamecock players giving their support to Coach Muschamp and uh, what I happen to think about that. Guys, I just want to look at this 
from a, a black and white point of view, okay? I'm writing down records. I'm writing down stats. As you can see, that's on the back of a bio receipt. Ain't gonna be around much longer. That might be an antique. It's black and white, okay? I don't, I don't, nothing is gray. This is pure facts, okay? Will Muschamp is supposed to be a defensive guy, right? Okay, he played defensive back at the University of Georgia. His grad assistant jobs, he's mostly focused on defense. He was defensive coordinator at Texas when they won a national, or competed for a national championship. Oh, no, they won. Yeah. Did they win it when he was there? Or they compete? Anyway, he was there when they either won or competed for one. And he was at LSU when they won or competed for one front or Nick Saban. Um, so he's a defensive guy, right? So looking back at his record, though, as a head coach, and this is with Florida and with South Carolina. I've combined all this together. Um, in 2011, Will Muschamp's first year as a head coach at Florida, his defense was ranked number 21. In 2012, his defense was ranked number 5. That happened to be the team that went 11-2. and two. So you can kind of understand that, which when we go on the other side of the spectrum, you're going to have a hard time figuring out. Now, I'll get to that in a minute. Um in 2013, his defense ranked number 15 in the country. That was the year he also went 4-8 and eight and lost to Georgia Southern at home without Georgia Southern having the benefit of completing a goddamn forward pass. <laughs> I, th that befuddles me. In 2014, which was his last uh, season as head coach at the University of Florida, which was cut short after he lost to the Gamecocks, he was fired, um, he finished number 19. Okay. None of those are bad numbers. None of those are bad numbers. And the number five ranking is really good. That's really good. That's boarding on elite. Let's see what I was done at the University of South Carolina, okay? And we're going to wedge this in here. At 2015, he was the defensive coordinator at Auburn, okay? He's a defensive guy. In 2015, Auburn's uh, defense ranked number 76 in the country. Okay. In case you don't know how many teams are in um, the Power Five or in the FBS altogether, that's not good. 2016 at South Carolina, number 53. 2017, number 25. Not a bad mark. And uh, that was the year South Carolina went 9-4, and four, beat Michigan in a bowl game, and uh, skirted by several shitty teams in the regular season to uh, inflate our overall record to 9-4, and four, which many Gamecock fans thought earned him a huge contract. And apparently so did the athletic department, which they gave to him. That was the huge mistake that was made. That season was the huge mistake, the huge blunder. 2018, the defense drops down to number 68. Ouch. You go from 25 to 68. That's a shit show. And 2019, it elevates itself 15 points to number 53. So, looking at that, from 2016 to 2019, numbers-wise, we are ranked number 53 both years. Guess what that means to me and to the naked eye? We have made absolutely no improvement. Made no improvement. You got a little better, then you got a little worse, and then you got right back to where you were. Not good. Um, looking at offenses, we're going to look at offenses for a minute, though, and compare that. In 2011, Will Muschamp's offense at Florida ranked number 71 in the country. We'll give him a mulligan on that because we'll say those were Urban Meyer's players and those were, uh, you know, greatly influenced by him. Urban Meyer didn't do too well in his last season at Florida. He went, uh, well, I don't remember what he went, but he didn't win the SEC East. Gamecocks won that. In 2012, the season he went 11-2, and two, finished number 78 in total offense, and that also happened to be the year that he had the only player that Will Muschamp has ever had on one of his teams that he's been a head coach on to go over 1,000 yards rushing. His name, Mike Jalesi. Jalesi. Do you know who he is? Huh. I don't either. I don't know who the damn hell he is. Guess why? Because uh, he's irrelevant. Says he was number five draft pick by the Dolphins in uh, 2013. I don't know who he is, but he rushed for 1,152 yards. My friend Rob on the Rob and Comrade show said it was Chris Rainey. It wasn't Chris Rainey. It was Mike Gillespie. <laughs> is, that, is that like a 
a combination of Gillespie, a combination between the Gillette razor and uh, and something else. I don't know. I don't know who this dude is. Anyway, he was number. Uh, he was the only one to rush for over a thousand yards. Now you've had a few. Now you've had a few. Rico Dowdles rushed for seven hundred and something yards a couple of times um, since you've been at South Carolina. So I mean, you've been cusping on it, man. You've been cusping on it. But really, Mike Jalisi in twenty twelve. That's the best you can do. Come on, man. In 2013, this year you lost to Georgia Southern without them uh, completing a fucking forward pass. 114th in total offense at the University of Florida. Yeah, you were 4 and 8 that year. You're horrible. Uh, you started quarterbacks such as um, Jeff Driscoll, uh, Skylar Morningwig. You may have started Jacoby Brissett there at quarterback. I'm not really sure. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, you were horrible, man. Horrible. Um, 2014. We finished number 56 in total offense at Florida. And uh, that was also, consequently, the year that you were fired. So, um, a university that has steeped in offensive talent, steeped in history of uh, having offenses that throw the ball all over the yard, uh, do all kinds of things offensively. And you, you average, if you take this out and average it out, you uh, average around number 75. So, that's not good at all. All right. Moving on to the University of South Carolina. In uh, 2015, I'm sorry, 2016, that was your first year there. I was looking at the Auburn stat. We finished 116th in total offense. Pathetic, pathetic. But we'll give you a mulligan there because it's your first year and you were trying to get things going. Right, right, we'll give you a mulligan there. Uh, even though you finished near the bottom of FC or FBS, we'll give you a mulligan. In 2017, uh, number 99. That was the year that you uh, fired Kurt Roper before the bowl game, which I was excited about it, man. I was all about Kurt Roper getting fired and somebody else coming there. I'm like, yeah, man, we're going to get somebody else in here. We're going to get an up-tempo thing going on. We're going to get some more spread. We're going to get more players in space. We're going to utilize Debo more, man. We're going to be averaging. Man, we're going to be averaging like 40 points a game, you know what I'm saying? 2018 with Brian McClendon as uh, offensive coordinator. We finished number 57. Number 57. Yeah, we did move up 42 points, but but I want to throw this out there for you. Um, we uh, gained about 500 yards total offense against the Taters that year. Okay. Nothing against the Taters. I know you were getting ready for Notre Dame. You were trying to throw Pitt, uh, Bone, in the ACC championship game and let them think you didn't have any defense whatsoever. Y'all were playing possum. Y'all were playing the third string. Y'all were sitting back like this all week long, just sleeping and waiting on the Gamecocks because you knew we couldn't do anything. I know all the myths. I know all the legends. And I know all the fucking stories from Taterhead, okay? Yep, that's one why we were able to put 500 yards on you. It wasn't developing a solid game plan. It wasn't none of that. It was that. Okay, And you played a game a couple weeks before that against Ole Miss. And if you know that, any game against Ole Miss is already pre-dedicated to giving up a ton of yards. And you're going to get a ton of yards against them because they're Defense is absolutely horrible. So, yeah, if we hadn't had those two games in there, I push that back to about 70th. Yeah, better than the years before, but yeah, not good enough to be considered um, improving or uh, you know anywhere near the upper echelon of the conference. And in 2019, uh, the much maligned offense last year, yes, we lost our quarterback. We know Jake Bentley went down with an injury. We know we know all that. But guess what? We got a guy from Clemson who was at one time Mr. Football in South fucking Carolina, right? Y'all were going to do some good things with him. We were going to do some great stuff. Guess what we finished up? Number 105. Hey, we had Brian Edwards, who was a high draft pick. And, uh, you know, the only thing about Brian Edwards was, huh, you threw the ball to him every 
fucking time you had the chance to throw the damn ball. You didn't throw it to anybody else. You spray, you throw it to Brian Edwards. It was either make or break. I would have hated to have been him. The, sh the, the shoulders, the, the burden of winning a game or losing it was on Brian Edwards. Okay? Because you y'all chose not to utilize, coach up, or develop any of the other talent on that damn field. That's facts. That is facts. Looking at recruiting, this year, currently, um, South Carolina is ranked number 38 in recruiting total uh, in the 2021 class. Um, teams that are ahead of us that I think is embarrassing, abysmal, sad, that we should be ahead of, Tennessee at number four, uh, who's completed almost their entire recruiting cycle. Uh, those numbers are fake. Uh, they'll drop. UNC at number seven, who's already been dropping a little bit. No excuse. Georgia at number 16, yes, I understand that that is a bigger name than us. It's a better program. It's a better job. I understand that. They've only got 10 commitments. I mean, y'all should be competing with them. Maryland, Maryland. The Turtle is at number 18 in recruiting right now, the Turtle. Now, they have that Under Armour scholarship or Under Armour sponsorship, and that's helping them out a little bit. Maryland is a shit show of program that is always going to be in the cellar of the Big Ten East. They're always going to be, them and Rutgers are always going to be like the ones who, uh, you know, you, you scrape your shoes, you get the dog shit off the bottom of them. Those two are it, man. I mean, they, they are not going to compete. And it feels bad because a lot of people are selling Rutgers short. Um, this year with Greg Schiano coming in, I think that he might surprise a few people this year. But they're still not going to be good. Even if if they're good by Rutgers standards, they're, they're going to suck. Even if Maryland is decent by Maryland standards, they're going to suck in relation to the rest of the damn Big 12 East because it's so damn good. Or Big 10 East because it's so good and so stacked. Uh, Louisville comes at number 19 right now. <laughs> Minnesota, number 22, P.J. Fleck. That's a coach you should have talked to a long time ago before you uh, decided to hire the dumpster. That was Muschamp. Missouri. Missouri is ranked number 23 in recruiting right now. All these people sitting here saying, oh, no, no, they're not going to be able to do anything. Eli Drinkowitz only had one time as a head coach in one year. He ain't going to be able to do nothing over there. That was Scott Shatterfield's players. Eh? Yeah, they met a bad hire right there. Guess what? <laughs> number 23 in recruiting right now. And uh, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if we lose to them this year. I would not be surprised one bit. Pitt, number 27. <laughs> Pitt, what do they have to offer anybody, really? I mean, what the hell do they have to offer anybody besides the fact that Tony Dorsett was there and won a Heisman Trophy 50 freaking years ago? They don't have a damn thing to offer anybody. Arkansas, number 28. That's the worst program in the SEC. Yet, we trail them by 12 points, or no, 10 points, Pardon my mouth, in the overall recruiting rankings. Uh, who is this? Don't want to bitch about next. Rutgers. Rutgers himself. Rutgers is number 30 right now. Cal. Cal is number 32 with 13 commitments. With just 13 commits, Cal is number 32. What the hell has Cal done in the world of college football in the last 15 years? Nothing. Georgia Tech is number 33. Georgia Tech. NC State at number 36. Pitiful. They're ahead of you. Boston College, pitiful ahead of you at 37th. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get that at all. I mean, this is, I know it's early. I know you've got some stuff out there. I know you got the Ingram Dawkins kid from Gaffney, South Carolina, who has crystal balls in South Carolina. And yeah, yeah, committing here. And that will, yeah, yeah, I'll bump you up a little bit. But, I mean, looking back at our recruiting classes since you've been here, 2016, you finished number 25. I'll give you a couple of check marks there because that was the year that you came in. You were able to save Brandon McElwain and uh, a couple other guys. You got Jake Bentley in here. Um, that was also the year um, that you, uh, you know, you saved Brian Edwards from flipping to Clemson, whereas Clemson fans said, who could have been a backup safety up here? <laughs> you know, he decided to go to y'all and play wide receiver. Oh, shit. That son of a bitch would have been a star on your goddamn wide receiver squad, you fucking idiot, damn inbred pieces of trash. 
Ah, oh, God dang, I hate y'all. Some I hate them so much sometimes. It makes me see them. It makes me curse. Uh, 2017, you were number 21. 2018, you were number 18. That's easy. 2019, you finished number 21. And 2020, you finished number 19. You can skew 2020 a little bit because we got uh, Jordan Birch there at the end. That probably elevated us at least three to four spots. We would have probably been around number 25 if we hadn't landed him. Uh, but not bad. These are not bad recruiting classes, y'all. And you think that people with these kind of recruiting classes would at least finish around the top 25 to top 30 in the standings at the end of the year. Now, I know... A lot of things can go wrong. Um, people can transfer out. People can transfer. Yeah, people get hurt. God knows. We know all about people getting hurt. But uh, this is kind of, you know, just a snapshot in time of your talent. And it's not bad. It is not bad at all. Uh, so um, are we utilizing uh, the talent like we should be down here that's my thing is the talent getting utilized down here and the overwhelming answer is no no it's not getting it's not getting utilized like it should be it's not getting utilized like it should be now we're going to talk about something here that uh kind of made me laugh kind of shot my butt a little bit and kind of got me a little bit perturbed is uh some former gamecocks taking to twitter and uh taking to some other social media platforms to defend to defend to defend this bag of dung that we call a head football coach. Comment number one. This is from IG Mike Davis RB at Mike Davis RB. Yes, Mike Davis was a game cop running back from 2012 to 2014. And he said um, in a comment on Twitter, uh, he tweeted it out and got over to uh, Sports Illustrated, the game cop digest uh, that. No disrespect to the previous players at South Carolina, but do you think the football team would be better with a different head coach? Muschamp is a really good coach, and I think y'all should give him some time. This was tweeted at 10.34 a.m. on July the 24th, which was Friday. Here's my thing, and y'all, I have mad respect for anybody who has played the college game, who has played the high school game, who has uh, experienced that grind, who has went through summer practice, who has been through weightlifting, who's been through all that. Uh, high school is, is nary nothing compared to what these dudes have been through at college. And I respect Mike Davis's opinion. I respect it a lot. I like Mike Davis. I mean, he was a hell of a damn player for us um, when he was at South Carolina. He was an old dependable. He was one that we could hand off to. And um, he, he scored shit. I mean, this dude was, he's still damn running today, got him. I mean, he was a hell of a damn running back. I enjoyed watching Mike Davis play. And I respect his opinion. He's playing for the Carolina Panthers today, which I will classify you, that's my favorite NFL team. And um, much, much controversy about this, too. People people asked me, like, a few years ago, said, who's your favorite NFL team? I said, it's Panthers. How long have you lived in South Carolina? I said, my whole damn life. They said, well, who was your team before that? I said, the Falcons. I said, well, why did you start pulling for the Panthers? And I said, because I fucking wanted to, bitch. <laughs> that's why. I mean, I, that's I mean, that's just it. I wanted to pull for a team that was local and this and that. They had some damn Clemson ties in their beginning, dog. And I'm not going to lie to you. They played some games at Death Valley. And, I mean, I thought that was bullshit. I thought they should have played at the University of South Carolina. I mean, the campus is more centrally located. Um, that dump over there is just not the place that uh, – I think that uh, an NFL team should have been uh, hosted too, but I mean they did, and uh, they. I mean, to the Panthers' credit, they keep them near and dear to their heart, and they have a Clemson Paul in the corner of their end zone to this day. If y'all hadn't seen it, um, watch on Fox uh, Twenty One. If you're in South Carolina or any of the Fox channels or CBS, wherever you see the ball games, the NFL Network or whatever, you watch the Panthers game, there is a Clemson logo in the corner of the end zone. Okay? Um, but, uh, you know, to know that a Gamecock's playing for him is good. And I, I'm not a dude who's going to sit here and say, um, you know, just because you're playing for you, I'm not going to pull for you anymore. There are Tater fans. There are Tater fans out there who – have sat there on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever else this off season, just a couple months ago when they had the draft, they were so damn pissed at them 
for not picking Isaiah Simmons, and he ended up going to the Cardinals, that they said they was going to stop pulling for the Panthers. And they've been a Panthers fan since 1995. Really? Really? I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. They're the most butthurt, stupid fan base that I have ever seen in my life. They are, and they prove themselves on that week in and week out. Um, but my response to this particular tweet, in fact, Mike, bro, come on. Um, do we really think we'd be better with a different head coach? Uh, yeah. I mean, dude, look at the numbers. I mean, they prove themselves out. Mike, look at the offensive numbers every year, man. Look at it every year. And everybody wants to say, well, he had a hell of talent at Florida. And look what he couldn't do nothing with them down there. Okay? Um, at Florida, offensive, 56, 114, 78, and 71. We come to South Carolina, 105, 57, 99, 116. Dude, it's horrible. A good coach? Okay, well, maybe we're a great defensive coach, right? Our numbers are 53, 68, 25, and 53. They're not horrible, but they're not good. And then you go down to Florida where they've allegedly got much more talent than we have. Oh, my God. They have got so many better players than we do. I mean, it's just like the difference between apples and oranges. It's just like the apples, the difference between Ricky Bobby and... And uh, Cal Naughton Jr. I mean, it is just like the difference between black and white. It's just between gray and white. It's just so much different at Florida than it is in South Carolina. I mean, 19, 15, 5, and 21. But then, I mean, look at the records. Hey, dude, it's not a good football coach. The record don't pan that out. So, please, let us know. What's your other uh, platform to tell us that he is a really good coach that should be given some more time? This is from Hayden Hurst. Plays for the Baltimore Ravens now. Former Gamecock tight end at Hayden Hurst on Twitter. He says, I'm a must champ guy till the end. He challenges you to work and reach levels you didn't know who you could get to. Some guys are wired that way and respond. Some don't. I was a nobody and he gave me an opportunity and challenged me. How will you respond? Cool story, bro. I mean, I love it. I mean, I, I like what you're saying, Hayden, and I respect it. I respect your opinion a lot here, and I respect it even a little bit more than I do Mike Davis's because no respect to Mike, it, no disrespect for, to Mike Davis, okay? Mike Davis didn't play under Muschamp, okay? He was gone a couple of years before Muschamp even arrived on campus before he was even thought of. So your opinion of all these tweets means the most of any of them because you are the most, uh, you know, closest to the program. You're most centrally located to the time that we're talking to right now. And, dude, I mean, to be honest with you, bro, that's what all college coaches are supposed to do. It's what all college and high school coaches are supposed to do is challenge you to work and reach levels you didn't know you could get to. I mean, dude, I mean, that's great and everything, but, I mean... He's not exactly, you know, setting the bar up here with that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's just the status quo. That's what everybody does. That's what everybody does. He says some respond and some don't. Well, guess what? A lot haven't. A lot haven't. And, and he hasn't. He, you know, you say you were a nobody and he challenged you. Guess what? I mean, he took your challenge and now he's a nobody. I mean, so how's that work out? I mean, and dude, I have rad respect for you, Hayden Hurst. Dude, I love you. I love what you did at South Carolina. I love the way that you blocked. I love the, you know, the, the resiliency you put up on the football field. I love the way you play the game. You're a true game caught. I do it. You are a great game caught. But come on, man. Come on. Don't, don't besmirch your legacy. Don't don't diminish your legacy a little bit by default by defending the pile of shit that you know, man. You know, bro. You don't need to be defending this dude. Come on, man. On Instagram again. And Twitter. At Mike Davis. Mike Davis said when we had a lot of talent when I was at SCC or at S at, at, blah, 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 at SC, I mean that. We were stacked. I just think it's not fair for y'all to hold much to the same standards. It's a new era. That was Friday at 11.27 a.m.
Not fair to hold him to the same standards. Bro, exactly why not? Exactly why not? Are they not paying him a salary? Are they not paying him a job to be a fucking football coach and recruit and do the things that he needs to be doing? Yes. Were y'all stacked when you was at South Carolina? Yeah. Y'all was stacked. Y'all was big time stacked. Y'all were big time stacked. You, you were, your last year was 2014. Let's rattle this off. In 2014, we was number 34 in recruiting. Or in 2010. 2010, we were number 34. This is under Steve Spurrier. In 2011, we were number 17. Now, that's a little bit skewed because we got Clowney in that class, got Brandon Shell, and we got Kelsey Quarles. Both those two are four stars. Clowney, of course, is a five star. Take those two out, we might have been a little bit lower. 2012, we were number 15, solid class. 2013, we was number 20. Uh, that was uh, Sky Moore and Pharaoh Cooper. Ended up being the only two players out of that one who panned out. 2019, we ended up number 19. Um, we ended up with uh, Bryson Allen Williams and a three-star named Debo Samuel. I think he went on to do some pretty good things. And in 2015, we ended up number 20. So, to say that y'all were stacked when you were there, I mean, yeah, y'all were stacked, man. But, I mean, like, y'all wasn't stacked, like, to the moon. You know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all were good, but, I mean, were your classes heads and shoulders above what Muschamp's recruiting in right now? When we're looking at um, number 19, 21, 18, 21, 25? Not really, bud. Not really. I mean... <laughs> You average all that shit out, it, it's going to come up to almost the same damn exact thing. It's going to come to almost the same damn exact thing. So, I mean, who was stacked and who really wasn't? Why was y'all's team stacked a little bit better? Why? I can tell you why. It's because y'all had a little bit better coaching. Y'all had a little bit better development on that side. And um, y'all had a little bit better chemistry. That's why y'all was stacked. You wasn't stacked because of the recruiting you was doing. You were stacked because of what was happening after those recruits got on campus. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Over on Twitter, Mike Davis says, The schedule for South Carolina has been brutal, Davis said, and to blame stuff on the head coach is a hyphen, little harsh. That's what I'm basically saying. That right there is the kind of doo-doo that really chaps my behind, man. It really chaps my butt. Here's my thing. And I've said it before. I said it last year in the off season, and I'm gonna say it again. Um, the schedule was tough last year. I'm not gonna argue with you about that, and I'm not gonna deny that. It's tough again this season. Okay, LSU defending national champions, Clemson defending national championship game participant. Okay, Georgia, uh, you know, really good team. Florida, really good team. We can't sit here and talk about schedule. None, okay? None. Y'all can't sit here and talk schedule none with me, okay? Because that shit don't resonate right now. We're in the SEC. They wanted to be in the SEC. They wanted to be there, and they wanted to be there because they wanted to be in the best conference in America. They wanted to be one of the best, okay? You don't get to be the best unless you play the motherfucking best, okay? And sitting here bitching, besmirching, and whining about having a tough schedule is ludicrous, it's hypocrisy, and it's stupid, okay? Don't talk about, beat your chest about, crow about, and talk about how great it is to be in the tough SEC and then turn around in the next sentence that comes out of your mouth and talk about how hard the schedule is. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. You know why? Because it's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. Yeah, Clemson is good right now, okay? And that's making the schedule even harder. Guess what? Who's it up to to try to stop it? It's up to us, okay? It's up to us. We have the state. This is our state. The university is named after this state of South Carolina. Our, our university and this state go hand in hand. Y'all should be number one in recruiting here. 
Number one, y'all should get the best players in the state of South Carolina. Number two, y'all should be able to make a name for yourselves nationally. But we'll get into that in just a second. I don't want to hear about how tough the schedule is anymore. It should be tough every year. Y'all shouldn't. Y'all can't sit here on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else when Clemson fans try to get in our shit for finishing up four and eight and having a crappy ass football team and try to rebuttal them with, "Well, you play in the weak ass ACC." If you're gonna sit here and bitch about the schedule that we play. You can't do it, man. Y'all can't have it both ways. You can't have your ho-hos and eat them too. You know what I'm saying? You just can't do all that at the same time. It makes you look weak. It makes you look stupid. And it makes you look hypocritical. Don't do it. It's a tough schedule. We need to deal with it. We need to get to players. We need to get to coaching. We need to get to play calling. We need to get to execution to make it happen to where it's not an issue that we play a tough schedule. You know why? Because this team is up and ready for the fucking challenge. Last one. Over on a private Facebook group, former Gamecock defensive lineman Eric Sullivan from, I uh, think, about 92 to 94 from Lawrence District 55 High School in South Carolina says, I hope he wins big in this next season so a lot of y'all can STF you and stop all this damn crying. Followed by 13 thumbs up, laughing, or heart emojis. We just don't know how they broke down. But Eric, let his yeah, I'm a level you too, bro, and I feel where you're coming from. I feel where you're coming from because you're a couple years older than me. We come from the same school. I thought, man. Um... The thing is, dude, it ain't no, it's not crying to accept better, man. It's not crying to accept a little bit more from, or expect a little bit more from our team and what they're putting forth, okay? They saw from 2010 to 2013 what could be accomplished on this football field by the South Carolina Gamecocks. And longtime fans saw from 1984 to 1989 what could be accomplished on that football field. They saw what we can do with the right talent, the right mix of coaching, the right mix of everything else coming into a proper blend. They saw what we are capable of doing. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. And them expecting that every year is not them being spoiled. It's just them having... Uh, high expectations and them having expectations for excellence, man. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. If you're not expecting excellence, you're expecting to be a failure. And that's exactly what these kind of comments like this are expecting. It's expecting to be a, a failure. Just wait till next year. Wait till next season. Uh, wait till, you know, what he what he's going to do next year. I have another Facebook friend of mine next year saying, I think a new head coach should be given at least eight years. Eight years? Eight years? Dude, do you know how long that is? That's almost a whole decade. There is not that much time. They ain't that much time. Meanwhile, everybody's passing you by. Clemson's passing you by already. Clemson's passed you by by leaps and bounds. Ohio State has passed you by by leaps and bounds. I mean, all just a plethora. I mean, there is at least... 60 other teams who has passed South Carolina by. How does it feel to know that Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest have passed you by in the realm of being relevant nationally? I mean, it's sad. It's really sad, and that's my thing. That is my case. I'm wrapping it up. I know it's been long. I know I've shown y'all a lot of facts. I know I've shown you a lot of numbers. I've recited a lot of stuff. That is my case in point for firing Will Muschamp. Get rid of him. Please get rid of him. And I just, I'm not going to be able to get full-fledged, to get all in, to get 100% committed to this team again until y'all do the right thing and get rid of this sorry sack of doo-doo. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm not going to be able to do it because I know that South Carolina can win big. It's been proven before, okay? On uh, a YouTube call-in show with Pist uh, Pigskin Pete, I almost said Pistol Pete, like I was thinking Pistol Pete Maravich. Pigskin Pete and I talked about South Carolina and that South Carolina should be in the top 10 nationally every year. And he felt that way. And he's a fucking Clemson fan. And guess what? He's right. You know why? 
Because it's true. It's true. They should be in the top ten nationally. We are in a great football conference, the best football conference in the entire damn country. We're in a recruiting hotbed. No, you're not going to out-recruit Georgia. You're not going to out-recruit Clemson. But you damn sure shouldn't be out-recruited by North Carolina, Tennessee, and especially fucking Arkansas. Y'all need to get your stuff together, man. You need to get it together because you are right here. What I call this is being sitting on a gold mine. You're sitting on a gold mine, and you just don't realize it. This is a throwaway season, and after last year, I, I, I moaned and groaned. I griped about it so much because so I was blue in the face. I'm glad they didn't fire Will Muschamp. I'm glad they didn't fire him. You know why? Because this is going to be a throwaway season anyway. There was no reason to go out after 2019 and fire him. Looking back, it was a good move because the COVID came on. And, I mean, if we had fired him and hired a new coach, say, um, one of my picks, like uh, Luke Fickle from Cincinnati, I mean, would he have really have had enough time to perfect his craft and get in there and uh, do a whole lot um, to, uh, you know, parlay an eight-game regular season into something for us to really get excited about? Probably not. So it's it's the right thing now, looking back, hindsight being 2020, to have kept that stupid son of a bitch here because, I mean, he can't really screw up during a damn COVID season. So let's keep him now. Let's do what we have to do. Either we win some, we lose some, we finish in a draw or whatever. And 2020, let's make a commitment. Or 2021, let's make a commitment to excellence. And um, let's go for somebody that's going to win some down ball games. Because uh, looking at the numbers, looking at the black and white of it all, it ain't going to be him. I'll see y'all later. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for watching my content. I know it's been a long video. Hope it's been an informative video because guess what? It came from my heart, Holmes. Spurs up to my toes up, baby. Go Gamecocks. Fire that stupid son of a bitch. And I'll see y'all later. Woo!